You go, uh-oh, like that's my favorite sound. And Charlie, you just hear, Arr, and you realize, and he was like knees, like his face was like six wall? inches from a brick wall oh. in a mall. And we're all right behind him going, get out of here. That's the funniest thing I've ever oh. heard. And he just got up and I went love back to work. Char- I, Charlie Murphy, I can hear him tell stories. The words he chooses. Partner. And, the, and he's such an interesting, like, how did he get so street, uh, street real and Eddie is so not? Because Eddie was famous and Charlie made believe his name was Omar and walked around fucking people up. Like, look out, Omar's coming. Really? Like from the, really? Charlie's name was Omar. Charlie wasn't Charlie until he, like, Chappelle's show. He was Omar. Really? Yeah. Shut the fuck you up. You ever heard this story? I think no. we talked about it on the podcast where there was a bully and Charlie told me a story and he held a joint and the whole time he had the joint in his hand, he would go to hand me the joint and then say something else and pull, he kept pulling it back. So yeah. for like 40 minutes, he's telling a story and he, now he lights his second joint. He goes, I'll tell you something else, man. This partner right here, I'll tell you this, playboy. Like, reach for it. Yeah. You go, see people like him <laughs> and he would just point across the room and you just, you just keep reaching and you're like a toddler reaching for Melba toast. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> and he told the story where a bully in his high school used to fuck everybody up all the time. This kid, I forget his name, but one day they had karate fights with sticks and this kid took a stick to the eye and lost his eye and he had an eye patch. And now everyone, uh, was happy that he lost his eye because he was like the gooch from fucking different yeah, strokes. He's a real bad fucking bully. <laughs> what a reference. Hey. Yeah. And the, the gooch from different strokes. <laughs> And so people would go, yeah, fuck you, punk. I'll fight you, man. And then they'd go fight at the bike rack or wherever they fought. And they'd poke him in his eye and he was blind. And then yeah. they would just, Brrr, and they would just shoe shine. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. And they would just kick the shit out of him. This motherfucker, the night before a fight, went to the school and mapped out with his eyes closed how to walk blind from the schoolroom to the bike rack. And the next day put the eye patch over his good eye. And walked out like a fucking zombie, but acting like real cool. And, and but it's Charlie Murphy telling the story, like so he acting all hard, but they don't know he mapped that shit out the night before, right? God, see this playboy, he got keys to the school from the and the shit goes like way back, and yeah. it's like layered like the janitor knew his uncle, right? So cat got keys to the school and worked for like hours, man, for like four hours. Oh. Playboy was out there just doing a zombie walk out to the out to that bike rack, partner, <laughs> and the next day. They're like, yeah, fuck you, punk. And he goes, I bet. Meet me at the bike rack. I bet your bet. ass. Yeah. I bet, partner. Be there, man. All right. With those big fucking teeth. Yeah. Be there, man. <laughs> so check it, man. My man, like, remember that cat Lon Chaney? He used to play all them fucked up villains and then on ghosts and shit. Yeah. Motherfucker just walk out to the bike rack like motherfucker, like a fucking black Lon Chaney. <laughs> Nigga just steady, rolling, real cool. We're walking slow like he don't give a fuck. And the kid goes, ah, yeah, fuck you, punk, and poke him in his blind eye. And then that motherfucker flipped his eye patch up like, ah, <laughs> and just housed this nigga, man. Are you just, fucking kidding? <laughs> just fucked him up. <laughs> man, we all know everybody thought he was like part zombie, man. Oh. Everyone said, don't, man, didn't you see when he was blind and he was running oh around, but God. they thought he was blind. After he got poked in the eye. So they watched that motherfucker get on his bike and ride his bike home with no eyes. Oh, man. They didn't know that was the bad eye. Now, how, how you gonna defeat a motherfucker that can fight you with no eyes? <laughs> <laughs> the, that is fucking surreal. I want, I want Charlie Murphy, I want, I want Charlie to Murphy to move into my man cave and just tell stories all just night. clean. Just, oh, just tell stories. I fucking love the way he tells stories. Why doesn't he do that when he's on stage at the clubs instead of like trying to cobble together like an act? Why doesn't he just go up and go, I know y'all like the Chappelle show. Let me tell you about this Rick James shit, man. Instead of going yeah. like, did you ever notice elephants in the circus? Like they don't want to stand on the boxes. <laughs> People are like, what? <laughs> I can't picture Charlie Murphy at a, at a circus. That's the joke he was telling when he gave his check back at that college that's on YouTube. What, what happened? He was doing, uh, like an all black college, like <laughs> Rambling or Hampton yeah. at like their homecoming. Yeah. And he's just eating it and they're like, you corny motherfucker, you suck. And he goes, Hey, James, get the check, man. Get the check. Go get it. Go get it for these people right here. And then like one of his – and there's like eight people like on stage. It's like a, yeah. it's fucking crazy. <laughs> and then uh he takes the check and he goes, look here, man. 
this is the check y'all pay me to come out here and tell y'all stories, right? And he rips it up and he goes, good night. And he walks. You haven't seen this? I haven't seen that. Oh, yeah. That is. He's telling the story about an other elephant got a leg up. Like, he don't pee like it. And they're like, (laughs) motherfucker, you suck. So then he says, Richard, go get the check. And some guy named Richard comes out. There's a check guy. Yeah. He's got a check guy. You got a check guy? <laughs> it's called me. Do you, you don't have a check guy? No. But you know you really are headlining when you got a check guy. When you got a guy to get the check before you. We used to have one of those when we toured. Check guy. Yeah. <laughs> so then Richard comes out with the check and he goes, this is what y'all paid Charlie Murphy to come uh, say hi to y'all to see y'all. Fuck you. And, and he just... drops it on the on the stage. And then I like when you let the video play out, it's it's Grambling University. And then when you let the video play out, you actually see a guy go on stage and steal the check. <laughs> My name is Charlie Murphy. <laughs> oh, what, what, so are, wait, what are the odds? That's the fucking uh, – that is the best – that is the most gangster move ever. You're no, not the gangster doing move would be to show them the check and leave with it. Yeah. To leave the check behind. Like, well, then why did we all just come here? You know, his, manager, Charlie's his crew. management called like on Tuesday. I hope yeah, they took the another, commission. Can we get another check? We uh, seem to have misplaced the worst But one. when you watch that video, he's going, I got one elephant. He got one leg up. I don't understand. I don't understand. And why. other three elephants are like, all right, I'll do that too. Holding each other's tails and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll do that too. It's funnier when you tell it that way. I bet he, I, I wish. Why I, was Amsterdam? What? You said it wasn't a place. So here, it no, it was, it was beautiful. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. It I is see it on TV. A beautiful like, it city. Like Venice. It's, it's gorgeous. Uh, there's a lot of like kind of sketchiness walking around. A lot of really Sketch. stoned. Really drunk Russians, a lot of really drunk like like the Belgium come in, and it's just like a lot of tourists from like Euro trash coming in, getting fucking wasted, really rowdy. And then we went to this, we were shooting at this place called the Banana Boat, the Banana Factory, the Banana Club, gay bar, nope, uh, strip club. And I was like, and we were shooting there, and I was sounds like, a little, you know, it it does. Uh, I'll tell you what happened. So we're standing on the outside, and then the guys who were running the place, these big fucking Dutch Jorn Vandersloot looking motherfuckers, and they're like, <laughs> they're like, um, you want you want to go inside, uh, have a beer, because we're done shooting. You want to dance, dance. And I go, yeah. And it's a fucking like knock system, like it's in the red light district. You got to knock. They open the thing. Who, who who said yes? And I was like, he said that we could come in. No. And then they had to come out and go. He's okay. So I bring in me, my co-star, and uh, and I think maybe one of my managers. And there's Was your co-star, co-star the, the chimpanzee the hot, bear? No, the hot chick that looked like BJ McCain, his best friend bear. No, I tweeted you pictures. I know, I saw. Her. Yeah, no, it was, it was she was smoking. She wasn't. Hot. She wasn't. Hot. She was smoking. So we go in. We go to your wife. The hot. bartenders are much hotter. Yeah, we we go in, and the bartenders are sitting on the bar, right, naked women. Uh, yeah, they more look like uh, kind of nannies than bartenders. <laughs> so they're like like kind of sitting on the bar, like job of the hut. Like sitting on the bar pouring beers, <laughs> they're like, "What do you want?" And we're and I was like, "Beer." And they're like, "Okay, here for the show." And I was like, "What show?" And then all of a sudden, one of the bartenders just turns and spreads her legs wide, like right there, and just shoves real aggressively, shoves a banana inside her, just <gasps> fucking, and you're just like, "Oh, huh? like oh my god!" Right inside, <laughs> comes out peeled, and I'm like. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you like, being for real? Yes. And I was, then I was just gonna make a joke. Did it come out peeled? Comes out peeled, right? And then she and it's sticking there. It's sticking there like a monkey had put it in there and just set it out perfect. And then she goes, "Who wants some?" And then a bunch of drunk Belgium guys start going, "Okay," and climbing up on the bar, eating it out of her. And I'm sitting there going, uh, "This isn't my fucking speed anymore." Like in high school, I would have been like, "Fuck yeah!" But and now I'm a grown. How man many going, bananas do you think you could have knocked back? <laughs> Because I know you got that Taco Bell twelve pack. Yeah, I, I, it was heart wrenching. How many bananas? First year FSU. How many bananas do you eat? Oh, it would have been four bananas. You would have went for the record before. Right? I was like, wait, what's w- the record? Yeah. Man versus vagina. Yeah, I would have been man versus vagina. <laughs> I would have been friggin' shirt off on top of the bar, going, "I'm doing the same trick." Like I would have been hardcore. I told you, you that- put six v- bananas in his asshole and then starts crying. I just realized I don't have a vagina. You heard? I, I told I told Rogan the story about flying dildos. Did I ever tell you about that when mm-hmm. we were on the road? By the way, if you. Uh, are perusing other podcasts to listen to. You can't really get much better than Rogan. Rogan's yeah. just top of the heat class act. I l- great I'm, comic, great I'm podcast. I'm very lucky to do every podcast I'm obsessed with. 
Uh, I've done uh, this. The, the, you and Joe and, and Marin, I think, are the three hands down no questions asked. The three. I had a guy say to me, best. you know, you and Marin are the only two podcasts I subscribe to. I was doing a corporate show in Detroit at Joe Lewis Arena. I think, yeah. And I go, hey, thanks, man. That's great. He goes, I go, you like because I haven't really heard Marin's podcast. Yeah. Because I've just seen him do stand up my whole life. I go, how do you like Marin's podcast? He goes, well, I fucking hate the first half when he just does like his rants, but I love his interviews. I go, so I have two podcasts. One of them, you hate half of it. <laughs> That's so, but you're subscribing to because he's, he is the competition too. Yeah. So I have to like take a shot. There's at no him. competition. They're not in my opinion. I don't look because I'm listening to both. You don't have a podcast. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm if it's the Bird Kreischer podcast, you'd be like, fucking Marin. How do we really? get him out of there? Why don't you do Marin's? You got to do Marin's. He doesn't ask me. Oh. Rogan never asked me to do his. The regardless, uh, yeah, they're the, I, irregardless, irregardless. The, the flying dildos. So I was in when I was this is so when I was in college. This is a perfect example of who I was. Not saying that I'm grown up or at all by any stretch of the means. We go in Amsterdam when we're in college, and we're, me and four buddies, and we see a live sex show, and on the on the banner it says flying dildos, like five things they do: live sex, oral sex, girl on girl, guy on girl, and Where's then the this? last one. This is in Amsterdam; they have live sex shows. Oh, the last one says flying dildos. That's what it says, and I fucking see that, and we're fucking lit. I'm in the 22 years old. Well, I'm like guys, flying dildos. And they're like, what? And I go, it's flying dildos. We got to see flying dildos. So Natch. we go in. It is the size of the Boston Comedy Club. Okay? Set up much like the it's Boston Comedy Club. It's too bad it's not open anymore because no one fucking talks about this fucking place more than Tell us. Tell me are. about it. And Okay, sorry. No, it, I, I went there the other day. It's a wine bar. Yeah. The, so uh, It's going a long way to prove a point. <laughs> so it's the size of the Boston Comedy Club. And it, the stage is a little bigger. But it's the same kind of stadium seating, right? And I'm sitting on the top row just watching. And the first... Girl comes out by herself, and I start the murmur in the crowd of all dudes. All dudes, 22, I start going, flying dildos, flying dildos, flying dildos. You were in Amsterdam this at 22? This Amsterdam at 22, yeah. Oh, I right know after you went I was there in again. Russia. Oh, oh, okay. And so I'm going, flying dildos. And then they start going, flying dildos. And the girl comes on stage. She goes, no, uh, not flying dildos. Sorry. And so she does her little act, and we're all like, we're like, yeah, it's okay. And so then the next one comes out. It's a guy and a girl. And I start going, flying dildos, flying dildos. And they're like, oh, sorry, we're not flying dildos. So they do their act, and everyone's like, uh. So then the, by the third chick that comes out, girl and girl, the whole place is chanting, flying dildos, <laughs> flying dildos. And they're pissed, right? They got to do a girl and girl scene, but they're like, we're not flying dildos, okay? And so we're like, oh, boo. So as they're doing their thing, we're booing, boo, <laughs> flying dildos. So the next girl comes out. It's a girl and like fucking a, a dominatrix like looking outfit but like sexy hot and she's got a, a medicine bag like a, what a doctor's kit bag looks like and she comes out and by this time the whole fucking group is chanting butt stomping the ground flying dildos flying dildos and she goes stop I am flying dildos and the place goes fucking nuts I'm talking 80 guys like yeah and she goes, I will need one volunteer from the audience. And everyone starts pointing to me. Flying dildos. Flying dildos. And I'm fucking. So she was doing a Bono impression too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's doing a Bono impression too. <laughs> so I go out. I stand on stage. And I've got my fucking finger in the air like, flying dildos. Fly! And the whole place is chanting. And she fucking comes behind me. And and the first thing she does, she wraps a chain around my body. And everyone's going, flying dildos, flying dildos. And she handcuffs me. And I'm like, behind my back, flying dildos. She rips my shirt open, pulls my pants down, throws me on the floor on my back, throws a dildo in my mouth, and then just starts fucking, uh, uh, and stands up. And she goes, that's flying dildos, and walks off. And I'm fucking tied up on stage, naked, going, help, help, somebody help me. She fucking sat on the dildo. Sat that on it, mouth. just like, uh, and everyone fucking loses their mind. And literally 80 guys come up and just start snapping pictures of me, <laughs> fucking naked with a dildo next to my head, like, help me, help me. And this is well before fucking digital photos because that shit would have been all over Facebook. It would have ruined my life. You should go – when you were in Amsterdam this time, did you look for flying dildos? So we go into the banana place and I and, – and Matt Schuler, my manager, knows the story. And so all of a sudden he says to the – he says – they do the banana. He goes, I wonder if they're going to do flying dildos. She does her banana trick. All of a sudden, dildo in, boom, flying across the room. Dude catches it. She goes, throw it back. Throws it back. She pops it. She's just shooting like BP to all these guys. Just bam, bam, bam. And I'm sitting. I'm going, so that's what flying dildos should have looked like. Oh, that's nice. I like many things about that story. Okay. <laughs> what? I like that you 
get it, it's almost like Christians versus the Lions mentality, yeah. and then you go eighty guys. Because <laughs> in my mind, I'm picturing like you know the stadium at like University of yeah. Michigan. <laughs> Flying dildos, flying. Paint black, you devil. <laughs> like people see the stones at Madison dildos. Square Garden. Duh, 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 duh. It's really 80, but since yeah. you're a comic, we know it's 40. It was really 23. Yeah. <laughs> Patch. And now everyone uh, was happy that he lost his eye because he was like the gooch from fucking different yeah, strokes. He's a real bad fucking bully. What a reference. Like, yeah. And the, the gooch from different strokes. <laughs> And so people would go, yeah, fuck you, punk. I'll fight you, man. And then they'd go fight at the bike rack or wherever they fought. And they'd poke him in his eye. And he was blind. Omar. Really? Yeah. Shut the fuck up. You ever heard this story? I think we talked about it on the podcast where there was a bully. And Charlie told me a story. And he held a joint. And the whole time he had the joint in his hand, he would go to hand me the joint and then say something else. And he kept pulling it back. So for like 40 minutes, he's telling a story. And now he lights his second joint. He goes, I'll tell you something else, man. This partner right here. I'll tell you this, Playboy. Like, reach for it. Yeah. You go, see, people like him. <laughs> and he would just point across the room. And you just you just keep reaching. And you're like a toddler reaching for Melba toast. Yeah. But it's <laughs> <laughs> And he told the story where a bully in his high school used to fuck everybody up all the time. This kid, I forget his name. But one day they had karate fights with sticks. And this kid took a stick to the eye and lost his eye. And he had an eye patch. You go, uh-oh. <laughs> like, that's my favorite sound. <laughs> and Charlie, you just hear, Arr, and you realize, and he was like knees, like his face <laughs> was like six wall? inches from a brick wall <sighs> in a mall. And we're all right behind him going, get out of here. That's the funniest thing I've ever oh. heard. And he just got up and I went love back to work. Char- I, Charlie Murphy, I can hear him tell stories. The words he chooses. Partner. And, the, and he's such an interesting, like, how did he get so street? Uh, street real and Eddie is so not because Eddie was famous and Charlie made believe his name was Omar and walked around fucking people up like look out Omar's coming really? like from the really Charlie's name was Omar Charlie wasn't Charlie until he like Chappelle's show he was 